So in my last video, we made this huge functional paintball Kraber. <laughs> That's awesome! And while it's cool to be able to shoot it, visually, it just does not look as good as it does in the game. Currently, this thing still looks like a 3D print, so let's make this thing look like an actual Kraber. Stick around, because you will not want to miss how this thing turned out. So when I was working on the last video, I was printing at pretty high layer heights, trying to get this thing out quick. But now that we're trying to finish it and make it look smooth, we need to reprint them at lower layer heights. Doing this will make the filling and sanding process so much easier. Once our parts are printed, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and hit it with this 2-in-1 filler primer. For parts like this that don't have a lot of detail, I usually go pretty heavy with the filler primer so it can fill in those layer lines better. I probably ended up going through two or three cans of this stuff just because of the surface area on the Kraber. But anyways, after that I let all the parts dry, and next I had to go ahead and sand them. Now just my luck, when it was time to sand, it was the coldest week we had all year. It may have been freezing, but I wanted to get this thing done. So here I am, sitting in the cold, doing the first rough pass of sanding. For this rough pass, I'm going to be using 220 grit sandpaper. There are some smaller spots where I went to a lower grit, because maybe I needed a more aggressive sandpaper, but other than that I stuck with this 220 grit for most of our rough sanding. Now I'm using a relatively cheap orbital sander that I got from Walmart, but you could do all of this by hand if you really needed to. After that I went over and did one more coat of filler primer. Something fun about doing your second coat is you can see how much of a difference that rough pass actually made. But anyways, I went ahead and got a second coat on all of our parts and let those dry as well. After those dried, it was time for some wet sanding. So I'm just trying to make sure our sandpaper is still wet with the water and smooth this print as much as we can with the 400 grit sandpaper. I'm extremely impatient, but when it comes to sanding, taking more time is better. So I turned my shield cell speaker on, sat in the kitchen, and wet sanded for a few hours. By the time these were done, they almost felt like glass when you ran your finger over them, and that's what I'm looking for. Once they were smooth, it was time to clean them off and go ahead and apply a black base coat to all of our parts. Usually for base coats, I'd use a glossy black, but this time I'm actually going to use a matte black because I want to bring the shine down on the metal coats. Here are all of our parts after getting that black base coat. Once the base coat was on to all of our parts, it was time to sort them out so we knew what colors going on what pieces. I used reference images to look at which parts needed to be black, silver, gunmetal, or our color coat. I let my community here on YouTube decide what color the Kraber was going to be. I was honestly surprised to see that 49% of you wanted the factory issue tan. But hey, that's what my community decided, so that's what we're going to go with. If you think the color should be different, subscribe! The skin is pretty basic with four colors that we have to worry about. Looking at the skin, the colors we'll need is tan, black, and gunmetal, with a silver undercoat for most of the parts. I went ahead and sorted all of our parts into those colors. The parts on the right will be tan, the parts in the middle will be gunmetal, the parts in the bottom left will be black, and the parts in the top left will actually get a coat of Plasti Dip. Now that we have a plan for the parts, it's time to go ahead and put the metal coats on. So in between our black base coat and our tan, or other black coats, we're going to put a metallic silver. And the reason I'm doing this is so if the paint on the outside chips, it'll actually still look silver, so it'll look like worn metal, and that's what we want. The muzzle is a great example of this because it'll probably take a lot of bumps and hits, but as that paint on the outside scratches away, it'll still look like metal. After that, the gunmetal parts are just going to get a coat of this metallic dark metal Krylon paint. I absolutely love this stuff, and you'll probably see it in a lot of my other videos. And here is our magazine with that gunmetal color. I definitely didn't forget to take a picture of all of our parts with metallic coats, but anyways. While the Kraber does have a little bit of weathering on it, I'm going to take this a step further. I'm going to take a lot of inspiration from games like Metro 2033 and Fallout 4 and make this thing kind of look post-apocalyptic. For some reason, I just love the post-apocalyptic look. Guns that are covered in dirt, grime, rust, they just, they look good to me. As an added bonus with a post-apocalyptic look, it's not going to get ruined as it gets worn and dirty because I'm going to be playing paintball with this thing. It's going to take some hits, it's going to get muddy. May as well make sure that anything that can't get cleaned off will blend right in. But this look that we're aiming for means that we need to go ahead and do a couple more things before we get onto our color coats. One of these things is using this rust paint that I found. This paint has actual iron bits in it that will oxidize over time to create actual rust on our Kraber. I did a couple test parts so you guys could see the effect of this paint. I just added accelerator every couple of hours and it turned out like this. So I'm just putting this stuff on there kind of randomly. I don't really want any patterning to it because then it really doesn't look natural. 
I went ahead and added this to all of our gunmetal parts off camera. I didn't want you guys to have to sit through that. Once the rust paint was added, I just added some accelerator and let it do its thing. It's so cool to watch real rust form on 3D prints. Next it was time to apply the rust paint to our tan parts, and we're basically just doing the same thing as before. Once I had it applied to our tan parts, I reassembled everything and we could have our first look at the painted Kraber. <laughs> it's never not cool. Oh lordy, okay. Gotta kinda of lean it, cause the magazine's not all in. Oh lordy. <laughs> oh my lord. Jeez, that's running around with this thing's gonna suck. Now we've added our rust and the Kraber looks awesome, but we still need to make it look real. So we're gonna do some weathering. I like to start this process by dry brushing with some silver acrylic paint. We get a little bit of paint on our brush and we're basically gonna wipe it off on the paper. This will make edges and high points look better because it looks like scratches in the material. I chose this clip of me dry brushing the scope because I think this is the best example of what this technique actually does. Unless you get really close to it, these look like actual scratches and it really brings out the high points. And here's a montage of me basically doing this around the entire Kraber. Now I'm not doing this on every single high spot, I'm using this on the areas that I think the Kraber would take the most abuse and likely get scratched the most. Next the muzzle is a little too clean, I want it to look like the Kraber has actually been used. We're going to do this with a mix of this black pigment powder and some black acrylic paint. I just grabbed a small piece of paper, put a little bit of the black pigment powder on it, a little bit of our black acrylic paint, and then mixed them together. I'm going to use this foam brush to apply our mix on the inside of the muzzle. This should simulate the buildup that you get after firing a gun enough times. I'm also doing my best to go heavier towards the front of the muzzle. I'm going to use paper towel to pad this down and then the pigment that's in it should leave a bit of a texture to it. It didn't turn out as perfect as I wanted it, but I'm still pretty happy with the result. Now we're on to my absolute favorite part, which is adding dirt and grime to it. I'll be using an array of oil paints, painted on and wiped back off. Kind of leave smudges, dirt, everything like that on the Kraber, it's going to look awesome. I love this kind of time-lapse montage that I did because you can see the Kraber get dirtier and dirtier as I work on it. It just looks awesome. I really think this is the part of the process that can make something go from looking like a prop to something that looks real. It kind of does this by A, it looks used, and also it gives this contrast to the highs and lows that really brings out edges. And the best example is right here when I wipe off the extra paint. After I finished weathering, I added a clear coat, and with that, the Kraber is finished. <laughs> Alright, uh, it, it's, it's done. It's done done this time. Oh, lordy. <laughs> uh, I think it's impossible to be upset while holding this thing. Uh, or, once it's built. I should say, I was very upset multiple times during the whole process, but... I took it outside to take some pictures, and I don't think I've ever been so proud of one of my projects. This thing looks absolutely gorgeous. If you guys like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. It helps me build more projects, and it helps you guys see more cool stuff. That's about it for this video, guys, but make sure to come back for my next video, which will be a video from Bones and Ashes of me playing paintball with the Kraber. Should be awesome. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and here's a little sneak peek of some video from Bones and Ashes.